Is your clothing brand actually as cool as you think it is? Or is it cringy as f I've created a video for you today where I break down the eight factors that determine whether your clothing brand is perceived as cool or not. How do I know this? Well, I'm actually a pretty cool cat. No, but for real, I've been running my own brand for the past eight years. I've done hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales, and I have the experience of creating something that is perceived as cool by my particular target audience. So you can just sit back, relax, and soak up this extremely rare information that is specifically catered to helping clothing brands get way better results for their brand. Before we get into it, Apparel Success is sponsored by my buds over at Design Crowd. And if you struggle with designs, I really recommend that you try them out. You post a project on Design Crowd, sick designers from all over the world are gonna compete for your project. You choose the winner, then you get that design plus revisions. I've literally sold thousands of these designs on my website and I got them all made through Design Crowd. If you're interested, head over to designcrowd.com forward slash apparel to learn about the special offer that I have for you, or just use the discount code apparel when you post a project on Design Crowd. Okay, so here are the eight factors that determine whether your clothing brand will be viewed as cool or not. The first one is that your clothing brand is accepted by a subculture and you're challenging the mainstream norms. So this is about riding a perfect balance between social acceptance of a subculture that accepts you and rebellion of the mainstream norms. And a great example of this would be Nelk Boys. Nelk Boys has really pushed it in terms of the mainstream norms of what's acceptable in terms of what you can talk about on podcasts, the things that you can say, the type of drama that you can start. And to the mainstream, Nelk is just viewed as kind of like this weird thing, but to the subculture of young men who really understand it and just want that raw, authentic reality of things being given to them, the subculture really eats it up and accepts them. This idea of doing something different from the mainstream norm, but being accepted by your subculture is huge. For my own clothing brand, I have a few designs where they're really polarizing and the mainstream would think it's absolutely crazy. And you're actually sort of breaking rules. Like I have a couple designs that have the F-bomb on it. And we sell a hoodie that has a goose smoking a cigarette on it called the Hack and Darts hoodie. But I sell to the rural Canadian niche. And so to that subculture of people living in rural Canada, it's really cool. But to the mainstream norms of what's normally accepted, it's actually challenging those norms. So you know you're on the right path if you're being accepted by a subculture, but the mainstream wouldn't necessarily want to get involved or be interested in it. The second factor that will determine if your brand is being viewed as cool or not is that your brand has a sense of individualism. Individualism is where you are non-conformist and you're doing something that goes against societal expectations. Now, the kicker here and the nuance is that you're you're not just doing these things because it's going against societal expectations, but who you are, who your brand is, and its genuine sense of authenticity just happens to naturally be different from societal expectations. An amazing example of this that I highly recommend you check out is a music artist from the 80s called Daniel Johnston. This musician, Daniel Johnston, was a singer songwriter in the early 80s who had all these mental health problems and he was writing music in his mom's basement, but they were so real and so raw and authentic to who he was. He was a true artist and he just started blowing up because of how unique and interesting his music was. He actually got on MTV and put on a performance where he's like shaking and nervous because he's just like this little kid and he ends up getting this huge standing ovation on MTV and there's an amazing documentary on this called The Devil and Daniel Johnston. I highly recommend watching it if you're trying to understand what true authenticity looks like, true artistry and how something can be viewed as cool even though what society would normally view as being cool, he didn't fit into any of that and it's just an absolutely insane insane case study. But to reel this one in, when it comes to your clothing brand, you've got to do what's genuinely true to you. Any offness in terms of authenticity, where people feel like you're trying too hard or you're trying to do something just to make sales happen, is really going to hurt your brand in the long run. The more that you can just stay authentic and do what's true to you and have that sense of individualism, even if it goes against societal expectations, the more your brand's gonna be viewed as cool. The third factor that determines whether your brand is cool is having a sense of mystery or intrigue around your brand. Things that are sort of hard to understand how they're working so well, like where you can't really understand what they're doing, but it just seems to be working, 
creates this sense of intrigue and mystery that just seems to be perceived as cool. And I hate to use my own brand as an example because whether you view it or cool is totally subjective and probably has to do with whatever subculture you're in. But for my own clothing brand, I have a feeling that a lot of people who do follow me on this channel come across this YouTube channel and they see my clothing brand named K-Bud and they go, that's a stupid brand name. But then they hear that I've done $70,000 a month in sales and they go, how the hell is he actually like pulling this off? That's actually pretty cool that he's managed to do that with this clothing brand that just seems like just whatever. And so creating this quality in your brand where people don't really understand how you're getting away with it, like how are you actually making this whole thing work, but it just works can really improve the overall perception of your brand. The fourth factor that will determine whether your clothing brand is being viewed as cool or not is whether or not there's a relevance to their particular identity. If the person who's assessing your clothing brand is really aligned with your particular lifestyle that your brand's putting out there, your brand's personality, and there's a relevance there where they're able to understand it, they feel like you are the same person, they feel like you're a part of the same tribe, then that creates a sense of coolness as well. It's a lot harder to view things as cool that you don't personally identify with yourself. And what's so interesting about this whole concept of being relevant to someone's identity is that it goes back to knowing your target audience creating a brand for a particular target audience or finding your niche and serving that niche well and being authentic to that niche. It ties into this relevance to identity as a key factor. The fifth factor that will determine whether your clothing brand is cool or not is having cultural influence. There's a huge difference between being at the fact of influence and being at the cause of influence. Most people, the way that they live their lives are at the effect of all the different influences that are coming their way. And the people who are viewed as cool or most cool and the brands that are viewed as most cool are the ones that are actually setting the influence and setting the trends onto other people. And so going back to the other factors here, this is why having a sense of authenticity, doing things that are true to yourself and having that sense of individualism, regardless of societal expectations, will be viewed as cool is because it has this cultural influence. When somebody owns who they are on such an extreme level, they don't question it. They don't get sort of thrown off because of other influential factors and they hold themselves so true to their own beliefs, their own values. It inspires others to want to follow you. And that's really the definition of being a leader. And most of the time, the leaders in any particular space are viewed as cool. So all of that to say that you should be creating your own trends based on your own unique sense of intuition, rather than relying so heavily on what's currently viewed as cool in popular culture or whatever else is out there right now. The sixth factor that will determine whether your brand is cool or not is having a sense of simplicity and effortlessness to everything that you're doing. If you look around and you see people that you think are cool, you'll realize that they just have this thing where they just seem like it's effortless. Like they're not trying too hard to fit in. They're not trying too hard to do anything really. Everything just kind of comes easily and comes effortlessly. Everything that they're doing happens with sort of this sense of ease. They're not trying too hard to get views on their videos. They're just posting what they want to post and what they find cool. They're not trying too hard to make sales to their audience. They're just, putting their brand out there in a really cool way. And if you want it, you can have it. If you don't, that's totally cool. Having that sense of like simplicity and effortlessness to your brand will take a huge sense of pressure off of people who are consuming your content or considering buying your clothing brand. It's just like, wow, this brand gets it. They're pretty cool and they don't really need me to continue to exist. The seventh factor of coolness is having a youthful energy. This one is so interesting to me because I've noticed this in a bunch of different industries. Have you ever noticed, I don't know if you watched the Joe Rogan experience, but Joe Rogan is like in his fifties and the guy just kind of seems like he's young. He has like this young, playful attitude. A lot of other really, really huge stand-up comedians, even as they're like 50, 60, 70 years old, they still have this like youthful energy about them. And it's almost like they intuitively know that they need to have this youthful energy in order to remain cool and in order to remain relevant. It's when you try to be like this older, more noble, wise person who takes themselves too seriously that you sort of don't really come across as, as cool anymore. So when it comes to your brand, this doesn't mean that you need to appeal to like teenagers and like the youth, but what it means is that having like 
a sense of humor and being able to crack jokes and do things that are just lighthearted and keep it that way just gives you this sense of youthful energy that people tend to view as cool. And the eighth factor that will determine whether your brand is cool or not is when your brand has a sense of risk and adventure. If your brand is being fearless, doing things that are just sort of, they take some balls to do. People don't really look up to people who are sort of cowardly and scared and aren't doing what they really want to do in life. And so when it comes to your brand, having this sense of not being afraid to push the boundaries, not being afraid to challenge the norm, challenge the status quo and go after what you want and put that out there and just sort of be fearless is a really attractive quality and it's something that's really cool and will make your brand stand out and just be cool from all the others that are just fitting in and doing the same old thing. So one thing that I noticed about all of these eight factors is that to sum it up, it seems like what makes anything cool is when there's an awareness of who you genuinely authentically are and you're willing to unapologetically express that out into the world. Because that simple definition that I just gave you right now summarizes all eight of those into one. When you genuinely own who you are, then you have a unique sense of individualism. It doesn't matter if you're meeting societal expectations. You're going to be the cultural influence because you're not being affected by external factors. You're going to have a sense of mystery and intrigue. You're going to have a sense of simplicity and effortlessness because you're just being who you are and you're expressing that authentically. And as that comes out in your brand, you're going to notice that people are going to really, it just draws your attention to it and it makes your brand so much more attractive. So I hope that that really helps you grow your brand a lot better and I really hope that you enjoyed. If you're thinking about running your own brand or you're already running one, check out the Apparel Success Mastermind. It's a monthly subscription where you get direct access to me, you get access to a community of other clothing brand owners, all of my courses, and we do an exclusive live stream every single month. You can learn more at apparelsuccessmastermind.com and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.